Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to Pop Turnative. This is the talk show and podcast. We have digital discussions, worlds of TV, film, news, lifestyle, music, everything really depending on the guests. We talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Romoliotis. All social media know me is. Pity Beats. The Canadian Film Fest is all around the corner, and we are speaking to someone who you will recognize from one of the movies that you can watch at the Canadian Film Fest called Woman in Car. You also recognize her from Murdoch Mysteries on CBC. And then Joy is with us. And then welcome to Popternative. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate your time. Oh, thanks for having me. It's fun. There's been a lot of uh, talk about all of these things right now, so it's been fun. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because, you know, you've done TV, you've done film, you've done more TV over your career than film. What was the mindset going in for this film for you, Woman in Car? Well, this is something we, uh, me and Vanya Rose, who wrote the film and who has directed and produced it, uh, we talked about this film for the first time together eight years ago. So this is uh, this has been a while, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And that's how the way independent film really gets made is, uh, you know, she, she was studying at the Canadian Film Centre at the time and looking for cast and she kind of stumbled across me and was like who's this and they're like you've not heard of Helene like she's there she's like I don't know but she there was something that she found interesting about me or right for the role and then we met up and from then it was just a you know a discussion for years about how to get it made and a lot of rewrites and and in the meantime we um we did a short film together uh which was great as well and um and so you know, the difference between, to answer your question about moving into film as a, a theater, I mean, sorry, a TV, it's, you know, it's one and the same. People kind of act like it's two different beasts. It's really not. Yeah. It's a, it, Canada is kind of strange the way it segregates a little bit. Um, whereas yeah, I can, in other see, countries, I can see where you're coming. I can see where you're coming with that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we we kind of go like, oh, TV, you do TV. You're like, no, I'm an actor. I, I do uh, that yeah. in all different ways and different places and things like that. So, um, so, but it was great to be involved with something uh, that was a feature. But the thing is that it's so fast, you know, compared to TV, independent film is uh, this kind of crazy uh ride you know whereas tvs is so well organized you know we're like this uh well-oiled machine particularly with murdoch that's been going for so long so it was a very different experience but a really exciting one yeah absolutely yeah Mur murdoch mysteries a lot of seasons of that <laughs> yeah we, we can do it with our eyes no we can't do it with our eyes closed but but you know a lot of people have been with us for a long time and and it's just such a a family arrangement where uh you know everybody knows what they're doing there's just, there's no like Jesus Christ, we have to move really quick to this and then the light is changing and, you know, and that's what happens in independent film. You're you're squeezing everything into a small amount of time and hope to God everything goes perfectly, which of course never does. That's not the way film is. It's interesting because this film, A Woman in Car, is going to be at the Canadian Film Fest and with the pandemic, a lot of film festivals, you know, went digital this year and virtual and everything. But I'm just curious in your perspective as well, you know, um, we're working on a lot of movies and TV shows in Canada. Um, what do you kind of think of even but like before the pandemic, not like yes. now, you know what I mean? What did you think in the last like kind of three or four years about film festivals and like the festival circuit? Has it changed a lot? As it was it kind of is it more about kind of networking and meeting people? What's that like atmosphere like? Yeah, I mean that's that to me is what film fest is all or has always been about so this is very unique and a little unfortunate that we've had to do it this way when we were so excited about our film being out there we couldn't wait to go to party upon party and talk about the film but um that has been my experience you know film festivals are just like theater festivals the most fun you'll ever have of people coming together from all over having created something you're really proud of and uh getting to to meet each other and just have a lot of fun and appreciate one another's work. So, you know, I feel like this is a huge departure from the norm, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I think they've done a really good job with these festivals we've been involved in trying to make it as much fun and 
that kind of thing. Absolutely. We have a party, an online party to go to tonight. So <laughs> now in terms of your career as kind of a storyteller and actor, can you kind of tell us a little bit about when you decided that storytelling and acting was something you wanted to do? Because like you were originally from Perth, Australia, you were Australian. And yeah. you worked, and you you now live in Toronto. So, how, what like t- tell us about like the start, the starting point of the Ellen Joy storyteller career? Well, honestly, uh, you know, I kind of make the joke that uh, theater wasn't necessarily my first thing. You know, yeah. I mean, it. In actual fact, I wanted to be an athlete. That was my thing. I really wanted to do as I when I was like ten, and that. But I had some. Um, I had some issues like physically with my knees that meant that I couldn't exercise. They told me to stop and uh, it was devastating. I remember. And then cut to, you know, you kind of as a kid trying to find your thing. And I had a teacher who I'm still friends with today in Australia. And she was a special, special woman. And I kind of joked that if she had been my science teacher, I may have ended up, you know, a scientist or a a doctor or, or something because it was her who inspired me the most. Um, but I don't think it's any, um, any coincidence that she was all about expression and, and she just blew my mind and I, I wanted to do whatever she was doing. And so we did a lot of school plays together and she was sort of the beginning. And the first play I ever did was a clown show of all things, but <laughs> I was all limbs. I was 14. I was almost as tall as I am now, but just like crazy long legs and, and, uh, and as a clown, I was sort of naturally funny because I looked so awkward. And I, with no words, it was just the most beautiful experience. And I think there was no turning back from there. And then, of course, you just start to, you start to be that person that, you know, people go, oh, she, you know, you, you can't help but um, among your peers, you sort of start to, of course, you move on to acting school and you realize you're just one of many kids that have some talent, you know, but it, it started to emerge through high school. And then I went to university. I left university and went backpacking and, and then ended up in theater school, a bit more professional training. And uh, and really, there's been no going back since then. I mean, uh, it, it just was something that I just never doubted. I always wanted to do. And for some reason, it worked out for me, which is crazy. <laughs> Absolutely. It's interesting because everyone kind of has those paths of like when they kind of got into it. I it, It's funny because like I like asking questions to my guests where I'm going to get different answers because that answer, you're all like there's there's so many paths. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then, totally. like so many paths which is amazing. Um, I have a few I have a few more questions about women in cars specifically, but I did want to mention yeah. I mentioned on the top. I mean, you are in. One of the most, I mean, you could you could say, you know, successful, iconic. I mean, Murdoch Mysteries in Canada is like one of the best, one of the best shows, longest shows, so good. You know what I mean? Such an amazing yes. track record. Um, what's it like being part of a show like that that has such an amazing track record in our country? It's really fun. <laughs> um, it's. I, I. It's a very unique experience for me. Uh, because of the cat. Of the nature of the character and that is that i'm so transformed physically yep so i don't look a lot like myself in the character and so i have this crazy anonymity like nobody knows you know that i do the show you know there's a couple of my neighbors who have gone like put the dots together and they know who i am but they keep it on the low down and they know that it's like uh it's this weird thing that you have all these fans and tons of people watch the show, but they never realize it's you. And so you can kind of, I can find myself in conversations where I hear people talking about the episode and what, you know, talking about their love of the show I'm in and they don't know that I'm in it. And so it's, it is an awesome feeling to be in such a successful show, but without all of the sort of stuff that perhaps could have got along with that, which um, people might find glamorous, but I don't find it good at all i don't want people knowing who i am when i leave the house in my tracksuit pants i mean these days nobody knows who you are anyway because we're all wearing masks but um it's been super fun to be in something that uh the audience responds to so much yeah. you know like it, it's it's a weird thing as an actor you go like should i be doing something else should i but the fact is that you always have the freedom to do other things and to to keep working in theater and film and and projects of my own which i'm working on um 
But to have had a show that just has that much success because the audience love it that much and that they just keep wanting more yep. is just so satisfying as an actor. There's no way around it. It's it's very uh, gratifying. Um, and uh, and I'm very blessed. I feel very happy to have played. And she's a cool character. I kind of like her, you know, like she's very different from me. But I, uh, as an old girl, she's not bad. But I find it really interesting, too, because, I mean, the early days of Murdoch, I mean, I think that that show started in 09, right? 09, 2010, I believe, or it was like yeah, yeah, a I while ago. That. And it's interesting because I'm sure it happens a lot with a lot of shows like Murdoch where people will bring up something probably from like 2012, right? And like see, like, like, a, a young, like, an old, like an older season and you're kind of like, that was like seven years ago, but yeah, thanks. <laughs> I know. I was doing promotion for uh, in areas in um, Eastern Europe. They're just getting into season eleven, and yeah. so they we're doing interviews for season eleven. And I'm like, oh, I don't know, man. I don't. Know. <laughs> That's so you good. tell me what's happening. <laughs> what am I doing? Like, well, it's funny because I <laughs> I interviewed someone, um, Margaret Moreau, who's in the original like, Mighty Ducks movies with Emilio Estevez, and I'm going. I'm a big fan of the movies, and I'm going into like certain like plot twists and yeah, things and she's like that's cool but like yeah that was a long time ago <laughs> it's crazy um woman in car might not seem like it but there is a lot going on in this film there's there there, there yeah. <laughs> it's it's packed you know what i mean let's be honest um yeah yeah, yeah. we're not kind of going into spoilers can you kind of you know talk a little bit about what we can expect with you know your character and the movie and kind of add on to what i'm saying like there is a lot going on in this a lot of genres are happening there's a lot going on in woman in car yeah there's a lot going on in woman in car it's it's uh <laughs> and it's and it's subtle and it's not spelled out for you no and it requires actually the audience to do a lot in order to connect with what's going on, but it also allows people to connect in completely different ways. I've, I've heard from people who interpreted the film very differently. Yeah. So there's that, you know, but, uh, and then also I've heard from many people who've watched it more than one time and each time they go like, Oh, like they saw references or they understood what we were doing uh, or they just felt differently every time that they, they watched it and that it touches upon issues of class of gender and, uh, um, power and uh, a woman's place in the world uh, um, what we what we give up within ourselves in order to feel safe um, what what we how we identify as humans and what that what that does to us ultimately you know so it, it there is a psychological element which could be could be called a thriller but you know it moves at a pace where you're you know it's kind of it's having an effect on you but you don't really realize what's happening until you know it builds and um and so there's this tension that runs throughout it um that can be kind of hard to watch or hard to deal with until it starts to come together as to what it's really about and so it can be i feel like uh it's a very different watch for men and women Mm -hmm. you know women watching it have identified with many parts of it or parts of her or parts of themselves um that uh i'm so sorry my father and yeah, no hijacked the, um and so it it's um it, it is complicated <laughs> it is complicated and it really it's it's up to the audience to to sit back and uh sort of allow it to wash over them mm-hmm. and um and you'll find different things in it it's not necessarily clear 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 <laughs> no it's not spelled out for you in any way well the thing is it's like i'm i'm enjoying these movies that you know you said like you have to focus like yeah like, you know there's the there's the shows sometimes where you could and the movies that you could just sit back relax and passively watch after a long day of work and everything but yeah i'm enjoying these like movies that are a little bit of like a challenge for the mind we're like you do have to encompass things you do have to kind of pay yeah. attention so i like that you said that for sure no that's yeah it's most definitely that kind of film, and yeah. uh, and it also uh, kind of it moves fast and then it moves slow, and and you different and you paces kind of, for sure. And absolutely. you spend the, a lot of the time going, 
why is she acting this way? Yeah, what's what? going on? What? Yeah. And uh, and so sort of, you know, in some ways, it makes you need to know something, and then you get to figure it out yourself. And that and that is where um, people come up with different answers, which is an interesting idea as well. So it has more to do with how you connect to it. Oh, for sure. And then thank yeah. you so much for coming on Pop Turnative. It's been a pleasure, and and I'm glad you're enjoying the festivals. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, There's yeah. so much content out there. Like oh, it, no. it, it's it's crazy, and I just when I can, I want to watch it all. But sometimes yes. it's like very difficult. But when I can, it's totally difficult. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, do. So with this this movie's going to be running at the Canadian Film Fest, which I believe starts today. It does. Which we, is uh, crazy. Ours is airing on Saturday evening. Yep. And then after the airing of the movie, there's like a panel yep. a discussion with the Vanya and I think a couple of us actors who, who are going to be there, yep. um, where I think people can ask questions or they submit questions and we answer them. So I, I'm not sure how it works, but that should be fun for people who have watched the film so they can find out what they did to figure out. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. And where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? I'm mostly on Instagram. You yep. know, I I, I, I kind of can't do Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the absolute truth of it. Um, I have a friend who sort of does that for me, but it's really mostly everything that I do on Instagram. Um, I'm just a bit more visual in that way. And, and I don't like to deal with it that much. I don't like to go to four different platforms and hang out. At, you know, it's not really my personality to be in social on social media all the time. So I'm more on Instagram. You find me on Instagram and I enjoy joy or helene joy i should know that on huh? my handle it's you know i think it's like <laughs> but if they put in your name if they i think it's helene helene joy official underscore that's official right. yeah good job yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. That's it. thank you so helene much joy official official if you put in joy, you find it i'm also on instagram but you know uh uh, sorry, Twitter, but Instagram's the one to go to. For sure. Thank you so much. Congrats with congrats with Woman and Car. I really enjoyed Thank it. You very and much. congrats with Murdoch Mysteries because that's <laughs> awesome too. <laughs> yeah, I can't complain. It's all good all round. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this has been Pop Turn at youtube.com slash pop turn for previous episodes. For audio only, you can go to wherever you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, popturnive.com for more content from the worlds of Pop culture, lifestyle, music, sports. And until next time, this is Alain Joy from Woman in Car and Murdoch Mysteries and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.